All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. It's me, Addy, again, and I hope you guys are doing all right in the midst of Ragnarok itself. That's right, the other day, I finally completed God of War Ragnarok over on Twitch after five days of hardcore gaming, and now I'm here to review this masterpiece, as prophesied by the Norns themselves. Wait, what's that? Spoilers. Oh, <clears throat> Yeah, so the Norns also seem to be saying that this video will contain potential spoilers, and I use the word potential because I'll be using clips from the game that aren't massive spoilers. Um, I'll be doing my best to avoid giving away huge plot points, but some of you out there may understandably consider the clips in this video to dip in a spoiler territory. So if you really care about that kind of stuff, then before you watch this review, I strongly encourage you to either play the game first if you haven't already, or check out my Let's Plays, which I'm still going to be uploading. But anyways, guys, let's ride through the Fimble Winter Snow. So yeah, earlier on you heard me correctly. I call God of War Ragnarok a masterpiece. I don't think there's any beating around the bush or building up to that in this video, so I'm just going to go and get that out of the way right now. Santa Monica Studios' follow-up to their rightfully lauded 2018 video game has in my opinion, delivered on all fronts. I think that the most remarkable thing here about God of War Ragnarok is that it somehow manages to live up to the monumental expectations that its predecessor set. Now, I actually reviewed the 2018 video game last year on my channel, and in that review, I believe I mentioned that the game was my favorite of that year, if not one of my favorite games ever made. And that's because first and foremost, I prefer games that are single player and narrative focused. And in that regard, God of War 2018 stands in the pantheon of the greatest games ever made. And not just for me, but for so many other people as well. It tells a beautiful story of a father and a son navigating not only the physical obstacles that stand before them, but also the ones in their relationship as well. And all of this is just accompanied so well by spectacular performances, visuals, music, and gameplay, which I think that anyone, regardless of their preferences in games, can greatly appreciate. And the efficacy, detail, and passion embedded in all these facets that make a masterful video game is what caused God of War 2018 to raise the bar incredibly high for the industry. And this is why the game got a 10 out of 10 from me. Now I'm here talking about the greatness of God of War 2018 right now because I think that's a very important step in emphasizing the greatness of its sequel. God of War Ragnarok doesn't just follow in the footsteps of a game that is considerably difficult to top, but yes, it tops it as well. And in doing so, it raises the bar I was talking about earlier even higher. I don't know through what veneer magic Santa Monica Studios managed to pull this off, but they've effectively created an experience that builds upon its first act in so many ways, while simultaneously ending the Norse saga of Kratos' journey all in one game. It just amazes me that their original plan was to make a trilogy out of this soft rebooted series, considering that with their new plan of making a duology here, they managed to craft an epic conclusion that in no way feels rushed or half-assed, which I'll admit I was very anxious about going into this game. When I started this game, it was so hard not to be excited despite that anxiety, however, with how epic the set pieces are that kick the adventure you embark on into motion. From the very beginning to the end, you have that iconic one-shot camera that follows Kratos and his son throughout the game, and to that masterful direction, writing, music, and performances that Ragnarok carries forward from its predecessor, were presented with some of the coolest and most badass cinematic moments in video game history in my opinion. It was so difficult for me to not wipe that goofy smile off my face that I had while I played as I was witnessing bigger, bolder, and crazier moments from the first game that I already loved so much. And the momentum never lets up, it doesn't. From the moment you stand up as Kratos in the start menu at the beginning, until the very end of this game, there's never ever a dull moment and you're constantly jumping up and down, or you're on the edge of your seat, waiting in anticipation for the next dramatic set piece or character moment to take place, which never fails to disappoint. There's constantly something engaging, tear-jerking, or downright exhilarating going on during this game, and it just all feels like one never-ending roller coaster ride. Now, the most important thing for me to get out of this game going into it were the character dynamics and interactions, which were beautifully written and a joy to witness in the first game. And I'm so happy to say that they're just as good here, if not better. The main focus I'd say of God of War 2018 was developing Kratos and Atreus' bond 
and just showcasing the growth of that very touching father and son relationship, which by the end of the game is flourishing. What's amazing about Ragnarok here is that it shows that while Kratos and Atreus are in a good place when it came to their relationship, at the end of the first one, their journey still isn't over. And the game masterfully finds new conflicts and areas where the characters still have room to grow together, while being very careful not to character derail or undo the growth that these characters have been through in the last game. And kudos to the writers, man. They did that so well. They just, they killed it here. One of my favorite parts of this game is how Kratos and Atreus' relationship has clearly matured from the last one. And instead of Kratos chastising his son and barking orders at him all the time, he is now significantly more understanding, empathetic, and open towards him. It was so heartwarming seeing Kratos grow into a more compassionate and emotionally vulnerable character in this game, while Atreus continued to grow into his own man and make both himself and his father, and us, the players, so proud of him. These moments were so touching, and I just couldn't help but get misty-eyed during them. So much so that I was holding back tears by the end of this game. And I'm honestly getting sappy just thinking about it right now. So yeah, the story, the cinematics, the dialogue, and all the beautiful music accompanying it all by Bear McCrary made for one of the most emotionally resonant experiences I have ever had with a video game. And for that, I am just so, so grateful. So thank you, Santa Monica Studios. All the acclaim this game has been getting is rightfully deserved. And right now, since we're on the topic of the story and characters, I want to talk about perhaps the biggest deviation this game makes in that regard from God of War 2018, and one that it does so well. And that's the fact that God of War Ragnarok isn't just the story of Kratos anymore. It is to no greater extent the story of Kratos than it is that of his sons and all the characters they encounter on their journey, many of whom are familiar faces from the first game. God of War Ragnarok is less so focused on evolving a singular character and more so focused on involving an ensemble of them, and that said, there are so many more interesting character dynamics to witness besides just the one from the first game between Kratos and his son. Everyone besides just our favorite Greek god of war gets the spotlight here, and that one-shot camera angle no longer just follows Kratos at all times from start to finish. And this, in my opinion, was a risky move for the developers to make, but one that paid off extremely well. Whenever you don't follow Kratos in this game, you don't miss him because everyone else is so well fleshed out and compelling. But when it comes time to resume his side of the story again, it still nevertheless feels badass. And like you're reuniting with a long lost friend, who just makes you feel safe and powerful. And all this pertains to one huge gameplay change, which I am not going to give away. Don't worry. I'll let you guys experience the awesomeness of that for yourselves. And speaking of gameplay, I think that this is a good time to segue into talking about that a little bit more. Now when I started playing God of War Ragnarok, I immediately noticed that Kratos' weapons, attack patterns, and abilities were largely the same as in the predecessor. And to be honest, I was completely fine with that. In fact, going into this game, I expected that Ragnarok would just be a continuation of the 2018 game with very few changes to its gameplay and that we'd just be getting more of what we already love, since it's understandably an impossible task to top something that's already damn near perfect. But holy smokes was I wrong, and boy am I glad I was wrong. As I progressed further into the game, I began to notice subtle iterations to the gameplay of God of War 2018, which gradually turned into monumental ones that blew my mind and convinced me that this game wasn't just treading familiar ground, but that it was also taking absolutely everything from the last game and improving upon it in every way. And the best part about that is nothing new comes at the expense of what we already had. Just like with the characters, nothing is undone when it comes to the gameplay of the first game, and instead, Things are constantly added as you play, and I just had a blast getting to experience it all. On top of all this, you guys, there's just so much more variety to everything here. The biggest indicator to this, of course, are the new realms that you can travel to that were previously inaccessible in God of War 2018. Ones like Vanaheim and Svartholfheim, both of which feature these beautiful and colorful large open zones with so many interesting things to do besides the main story. And again, Nothing new here comes at the expense of anything. You can still visit the realms from the previous game, even though a majority of them are fundamentally different due to the looming threat of Ragnarok. 
but regardless of that, there are new ways to interact with them that just make so much sense in the context of the story and add so much to the gameplay as well. My favorite example of this is how in Midgard, where the first game was predominantly set, everything is now snowy and frozen, forcing Kratos and his son to ride on a sled pulled by wolves around the lake that they previously boated on. And it was so fun riding through Midgar, seeing all the familiar sights and a new light alongside brand new things to do. And it's not like boating is eliminated from the game completely, no. You'll still be able to do so relaxingly in the new realms which have eluded the cold grasps of winter. Because like I said, nothing from God of War 2018 gets left behind here. Everything from that game is back and more. And the wonderful conversations between the characters as they boat and sled are back from the previous game too, and they continue to shed so much light on lore as well as develop these characters further. Now my favorite part of this, of course, are the wildly entertaining stories and comic relief provided by Mimir. Once spoken, instantly broken. What am I? Silence. Correct! <laughs> I was not answering ah. That's awesome. That was a good one, Mimir. Now, another strong element of variety in this game lies in the enemies. As I understand it, the biggest gripe most people had with the previous game was that there wasn't enough variation amongst the enemies you were fighting. Now, I'll admit, this didn't irk me that much, and I never quite noticed it during my playthrough of God of War 2018. But my god, let me tell you, playing God of War Ragnarok made me realize just how much enemy variety its predecessor was lacking, and now I feel like my eyes have been opened. There are so many different enemies to fight in this game, both basic and bosses, and it was wonderful to see that the developers took the issue of repetitive enemies from the first game to heart and poured so much effort into ensuring that Ragnarok avoided this. After the last game, we've heard the community cry out for more mini-bosses, bigger creatures, and enemy variety, and this time we really leaned into that. So in God of War Ragnarok, you're going to be traveling to all nine realms, and each realm is going to have like its own theme of enemies that are very unique to that space. For example, in Alfheim, we're familiar with the Dark Elves, but this time around, we're going to be fighting Light Elves, such as the Light Elf Warrior. And my favorite part of fighting all of them were all the unique, brutal, and highly cinematic finishers that Kratos executes, of which there are so many more now than in the previous game. All right. Oh shit, this is brutal. Snap the jaw open. Or not. Oh, it's badass. God damn. <laughs> that was cool as shit. So I'm just going to leave you with this. The gameplay in God of War Ragnarok is simply outstanding and never fails to get you hyped up. Everything in this game is just executed at a much larger scale than in God of War 2018. And every single little detail in this game is perfect. And oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. And even when you aren't following the main story and you're off doing side quests, the quality never dips even once. All the quests here are given so much weight, significance, and continue to develop our favorite characters here even further through so many meaningful encounters and conversations. The other day during my first stream of God of War Ragnarok after beating its main quest, I was feeling empty and sad that it was all over. But soon enough, I was back to normal while doing the side quests, since it felt like the game never ended and that I was getting to witness even more story. It is just so refreshing to get a video game like this once in a blue moon, where side content doesn't feel tacked on or meaningless, and instead elevates your experience. In fact, and without getting into spoilers, there's an event that takes place during the ending of this game that really crushed my soul and made me instantly regret not doing more side quests during my main story playthrough as opposed to after it. That's just how much this game makes you care for its side content. It's all as much a part of Kratos' journey as him and his son's main quest to stop Ragnarok is. And I'll never forget this beautiful said journey I was lucky enough to experience. And again, I'm just very grateful to everyone at Santa Monica Studios for delivering a shining piece of art like this. And to every single actor as well. Dude, Christopher Judge's Kratos will easily go down as one of my favorite performances for a video game character. Right up there with Norman Reedus as Sam in Death Stranding. Every line of dialogue spoken by Kratos was delivered so powerfully by Judge, and the emotional vulnerability and wisdom embedded in these lines 
will stay with me forever. Kratos remains a legendary character in a legendary game. And games like these come once in a blue moon. In a sea of mediocrity and familiarity, it feels so good every once in a while to get a truly breathtaking experience like God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring which came out this past year, both of which do everything they can to be exemplary and remind us of what video games are capable of being when they push boundaries. It is going to be so interesting seeing which of these two games is going to walk away with the Game of the Year award next month, which by the way I will be reacting to that so check out twitch.tv slash irritablenian, <coughs> shameless plug over. <laughs> but honestly, I'd be fine if either one of these snagged it. I gave Elden Ring a 10 out of 10 earlier this year, and now I'm going to do the same damn thing again for God of War Ragnarok. God of War Ragnarok gets a 10 out of 10 from me. These are both masterpieces that have achieved excellence in very different genres and facets that deserve all the praise they're getting. And yeah, yeah, I know, I did give God of War 2018 a 10 out of 10 as well, and I did kind of sit here for a sec before recording this review to think to myself, does Ragnarok really deserve a perfect score, and does it really get a 10 as well? Do both of these games back-to-back, -back, Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok, deserve the score I gave them? And honestly, you guys, you can roll your eyes, I don't care, but yes. Santa Monica Studios has truly struck lightning twice as most review outlets have been saying with God of War Ragnarok. I strongly encourage you to try this game out if you're able to. And the thought of that on its own gets me hyped up. Even though I played it myself, right? The thought of someone else playing it is incredibly exciting given how incredible this game is. There's so much more I can talk about here, but given how much I love this game, this video would never end if I did that. So with that, you guys, I'm going to end the review off here. Thank you everyone for not only your support during my playthrough of Ragnarok, but also for my journey creating content these past three years on Twitch and YouTube. It really means a lot to me that I get to be here and do what I'm passionate about most with so many people stopping by and encouraging me. And I'm never going to go anywhere until I die, because in the wise words of Kratos, death can have me when it's earned me. God, I love the writing in this game. But anyways, guys, stay tuned for more Let's Plays of my God of War Ragnarok stream through, I guess you could call it, <laughs> here on my YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you subscribe for that. Um, and if you do want to check out the full unedited VODs before those go up on this channel, um, or if you'd just like to catch me when I'm live doing some post-game content, boss fights, and so much more, uh, then please do follow me over on twitch.tv slash irritableindian. I'd greatly appreciate that. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay positive, and as always, keep on keeping on.